Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We are the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may not have prepared you for. As always, I am AJ and sitting across me, Jason. Jason, how are you doing this lovely morning? It has been a slow morning, AJ. I've, I don't know whether... So I've gotten into this thing where I go running at night and it gets later and later and I run sometime around you know, 10, 11 p.m. usually. And uh, lately it's been beating up on me, man. This cold weather, I get back, I cool down, shower off, get in bed. And, and sometimes it pushes me to midnight, 1230 before I'm getting in bed. <laughs> it's tough grief. getting up in the morning. <laughs> well, you could always remedy that with no running. That's yeah, what I live by. Know. Well, you know, I, I got to do it at some point in time. Otherwise, you know, I'm a, it's it's like having a puppy that you need to walk. <laughs> I need to be walked. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah. W- what about you? How's your day going? I am living the best life right now outside of schoolwork. Uh, the World Cup's on right now, and I'm I'm a massive World Cup follower. I love all oh, the games. Oh, yeah, I've that's your all jam, right? <laughs> Matter of fact, I've got the game sitting next to me as we record this because I just I, – I love – I love watching soccer on the world stage. So, um, have you missed the game yet? No. I w- this morning I woke up. And t- so this will this will tell the listeners when we're recording this. If you have listened to it, and then by the time you hear this episode, it's not going to be a spoiler alert because you'll have seen it. Um, but this morning I woke up and watched Argentina and Saudi Arabia play, and and watched that massive upset: Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. So in in sports, you never know. There are the there are the odds, and the bookies have them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's all those miracle matches where, you know, it happens in every sport where the nobody beats the somebody. Yeah. And it's 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 this old saying we used to have when I played poker. We we played a lot of poker in college. But, you know, all you need is a chip and a chair. Is If you've yeah. got a chip and a chair, you still got a chance. So Absolutely. Um, I mean, we've seen a lot of non-professional players make it to the final table at the World Series of Poker. I mean. Oh, yeah. So. <clears throat> In the long run, that, you know, you're not going to see these types of upsets from the same team or the same individual over and over. But in the short run, anything can happen. Yeah. So. That's the beauty of sports is because there's such a, a large percentage of it is, I mean, obviously a skill, but there is the element of luck. And you can have good luck, you can have bad luck. And, and there's days where when I played soccer, I mean, we would have what seemed to be 20 shots on goal, but just nothing would fall in the back of the net. So it was just not our day. We used to just say it was, just, it was not our day. We would have 20 shots. They would have one shot and we'd lose one, nothing. Cause that one shot went in for them. So speaking of winning and losing, uh, I was thinking we could talk about politics on campus this morning. What do you think? Just one of the areas that I've been pushing off for. Well, since it's been on the docket, I have not wanted to talk about this. Is the part of the, this is the, this is the one thing I think on campus that I hate more than anything, but let's go ahead and pull this Band-Aid off and get it over with. Um, I'm not a big well, bef- fan of it. Before we do, let me remind everybody, yeah. hit us up on the website. <clears throat> we need some new topics to talk about. You guys, let us know what you're interested in hearing about. That's reschooled with a D, not an ED. Or, like I say, you can check us out on the social media handle, send us a message through there and let us know. Uh, but please, please, please always you know, give us those stars on the on your favorite podcasting app because that's what's going to keep us keep us out there, keep people downloading our episodes and stuff like that. So we appreciate it. I have a feeling you and I are going to be fairly different on some of these things. Um, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to make for a really interesting show. Uh, quick question. Are you a mm-hmm. political person? I keep up with politics. I don't know if I'd call myself a political person. I have strong opinions uh, when it comes to my preference in terms of political actions. Uh, but do I live and breathe politics? Do I want to talk about politics around other people? Is it something I bring up, I don't know, during my classes and things like that? The answer is no. Actually, yeah. I try to avoid it at all costs when it comes to classroom discussions, when it comes to uh Honestly, with even my friends and fam, particularly my, my family, I would say I try to avoid it just because there no good can come of it, right? What What about you? Do you talk about? Uh, are you a p- political guy, or do you talk about it much? Or 
I think I'm in the same boat as you are. I'm not a, I'm not a, I keep up with it. I, I mean, I understand kind of what's going on and I, I try to stay apprised to what's, um, you know, the, the political nature of what's going on around the country. And, but I try to avoid it like the plague. I don't, I don't, I'm like you, I don't like to talk about it. Um, mainly because, you know, it's, it's, it's like you said, there's no good that comes from talking about it because people are so staunch in their, in their beliefs right now and their political opinions, um, that you can't have a ca casual conversation with somebody right now and not mm -hmm. offend or be offended in some way. So I just stay out of it as much as I can. Um, it's to me, it's gotten worse over the years and, uh, yeah. I just, I don't, I stay away from it. I, I run from it. I would rather talk about money and religion to people than politics. And those are the three oh, things you're never supposed to talk about. Well, all day long, I'd rather talk about, I, I think, what's the, what's the trifecta? Or actually, there's four, right? It's money, politics, religion, and sex. Oh, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that too, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'd talk about the other three all day oh, long yeah. before I talk In about. In a heartbeat. Yeah. So, but, but, uh, but, you know, it's a necessary part of our world. Um, yep. it seems like in college is where people start to really get interested in politics mm -hmm. in terms of your traditional student gets out of high school. You oftentimes don't see a lot of political involvement or political interest. And then sometime in college is when they start to become aware of the world. And if you're outside of college, you don't go to college type thing, I think that happens sometime around the same age. Yep. It's something about your exposure to different aspects of the world, I think, begin to make you interested in the political process. And then all of a sudden you, you know, you join one of the teams, right? Yeah. Oh, and, and typically then, too, like, you know, you, you're coming out of high school at 18. So you may have just voted coming out of high school, depending on when your mm -hmm. birthday is, you may not be voting for another year or two. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's, you know, your first years in college, that's where you're getting your first exposure to the, what others are saying is necessary information for you to understand how to vote. Yeah. So, and you know, early on your first impressions, just like when you meet somebody, your first impressions are kind of what cement your interest. And it seems like today there's this funnel of information uh, that, is all oriented towards the other side's the bad guy, the other side's oh, yeah. wrong on everything they do. So you join, like I say, people have this tendency towards joining a whole team, right? Mm -hmm. You adopt pretty much everything that team stands for. And if the team stands for something you don't care as much about, you, you focus on the other things, right? Yeah. And then you get argumentative and you get uh, very opinionated. And the funny part is it's it doesn't matter how uninformed it doesn't matter how off the information. If you talk about something that requires facts, like you, you want to debate science with somebody or you want to debate anything that, you know, history, things mm -hmm. that happened. Well, there are facts that you can go back towards and people just don't feel as into that or as comfortable with that. But it, when it comes to politics, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody thinks they're knowledgeable enough to talk about it when usually it's not the case. Most, you know, research out there shows that uh, most people are so ill-informed about the actual state of affairs that their opinions are nothing but that. They're not logical assertions. They're just, hey, this is my opinion. And yeah. they, but they, but they, but they stated as cold hard fact and I, it's just amazing to me how vehemently people get into uh expressing their political views and things like that when the truth is they, they really just don't know that much about it well the thing i find interesting too is and this is where i'm i, I struggle with the most when you're talking about people stating facts or or even the facts that you hear on tv uh on the commercials the political ads and stuff like that is you know, and if there's one thing I've learned in stats class in these past year and a half that I've been in the doctoral program and then also the stats that I've had when I was in college is stats can be turned in different ways. Like you can turn stats to to make it more positive for what you're trying to to um, uh, argue for or against. Um, you know, you can turn something into an average versus a per capita. You can turn something into, you know, those those kind of things have different meanings. And 
it's always, you know, as you, as you see it on the, on the, the, the TV ads and stuff like that, it's, you know, they say one thing and you're like, okay, but what, what about this? Like, why aren't you telling the whole story? Like if you say total versus average, that gives you a whole different, different, you know, idea. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's just those, those little things just, you know, they, they play into people's, like you said, they play into people's already existing beliefs. Confirmation bias is a big thing when it comes to political, you know, facts. Um, so. And, you know, it's a, we were just talking about world cup and teams mm -hmm. and things like that. And people fall behind their nation's team. Well, politics is the same way. Yeah. We want to be part of a team. We want to associate with others who are in some way similar to us. And we buy in wholly based upon usually one thing of interest to us. Usually it's a prejudice. You know, Einstein's famous for his quotations over the years. And one of his quotations was uh, uh, common sense is nothing but a collection of the prejudices Mm -hmm. that we acquire before we're 18 years old. Yeah. And that kind of says it, right? It's heuristics that we get exposed to things. We have strong opinions, whether it's this is how people should act. This is how people should be raised. This is the role of men and women in society. This is the role of classism. This is, uh, you know, all of these hot button social issues. They get an opinion about it. And that becomes such a guiding force in their life. That whatever group, whatever party as- ascribes to that way of thinking, then everything else that comes with it is right and the other side's wrong because it makes people feel better that the other side is just wrong yeah. or, or bad people rather than looking at everything individually and say, what, why do they feel that way? What is the logic uh, behind it? And is there something I should be entertaining from their argument or from their position? But it just doesn't work like that. And yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it's a sad state of affairs, especially for educators who say you should, you should know things. You should understand things. You should seek to learn things or increase your knowledge base from reputable sources, yeah. meaning that it needs to be based on fact rather than just opinion based stuff. And, that's just that's just not where it is. Po- yeah. Politics has not gone that direction. It is based largely on opinion and prejudice, and then that team based thing of other people believe it, and I like those people, so I'd just rather be part of this team. And it doesn't matter whether it makes yeah. sense or or if it's some way not fair or some way discriminatory or some way uh, you know advantageous to me. When it should not be unfairly, it doesn't matter, right? I'm part of a team and we all believe this way, so it's okay. Yeah. All right. And well, so. let's get into the main questions because I think this is going to feed right into what we were just talking about. But what are your feelings about politics on campus from a prof- professor's perspective? Well, I know it's going to be there. And honestly, students who get involved in politics and want to learn about it, I'm pro that simply because... Anytime anyone wants to learn about something, it amazes me to see students who get into it and over the course of half a semester, they'll become vehement about something. And now I have that course, that student in my course, and the student is so bad sometimes at learning things. Mm -hmm. By and large, you know, most students I've ever taught don't know much yet. Yeah. And even by the end of the course, they're just barely scratching the surface on some things that are that are fundamental, very important in life. And for me to see how little understanding they have of something that's so fundamental to society, because, you know, I've always taught elements of business and law. Particularly the legal matters, and they have this formed opinion about who should who should rule our government, who should be in charge, what what uh, laws should be in place, what um, all of these things, they get these strong opinions, but underlying it, they know so little. And that has always bothered me. So I like the idea of people getting interested. I don't like this whole tendency of it being almost like a cult that people fall into and they get obsessive 
uh, extraordinarily passionate about it and not rightfully so, right? Yeah. They, they don't have the, the background and the knowledge to, to be that vehement about something, right? I, I, wish, I wish the college experience, the, the openness that education is supposed to create within you, the acceptance of other views, the ability to analyze uh, different uh, types of and sources of information and things like that, we're present in that political process. And from what I've seen, you just, that's just not present. I don't know. What do you think about it? It's so in summary, it's a frustration for me. What, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I, I agree with all your points. I would like to add too that, you know, one of the issues that I have with talking about politics with anyone uh, again, we're looking at it from the perspective of, of the professor. So the, the professor kind of student uh, environment is I've I've noticed over the past, you know, since I've been keeping up with politics or at least trying to, to you know, keep my mind um, apprised of what's going on in politics. So it's been a few um, uh, presidential uh, elections and stuff like that. I just feel like the bias that we view politics through that lens that we we view politics through has increasingly become more so the, the the bias has become stronger and stronger in the way we talk and the way we we discuss politics among other people and i think that's what's really hurting the ability for people just to 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 talk about politics like i don't i'm i've I'm a firm believer that if you can't say three positive things and three negative things about your candidate or the person you you support and the person that, that they're running against, I think you're too biased. I think everybody has positives. There's no questions. Everybody, every single person has some positive. And I think if you can't admit that, then I think you're too biased. And when in those situations, when you're too biased, you're pushing so hard your 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 beliefs, your opinion. And you're not accepting that there is another side. And that's what hurts the discussion is that the one thing I hate more than anything is if we're talking about somebody, like if, if you and I were talking about somebody, uh, one of the candidates, and it just so happens that we had something weird. And, and the only focus of the discussion is who the, the one candidate. Let's just say that you're a candidate. And I bring up something negative about the candidate. The thing I can't stand more than anything is somebody going, well, your candidate did this. Yeah. Well, that's they can be mutually exclusive. <laughs> they could be yeah. both bad people. Just we were just the, on the focus the, of of this one person. The unwillingness to recognize that this is not just you pick one team or the other wholly. You can look at somebody and say this was just terrible. I, yeah, right? that irks me on, to no end. Bo both sides, and, and yeah, you're right. I, I see that all the time, and it annoys it annoys me greatly as well. Yeah. So. Oh, I, I, I inevitably, if that happens, I'm like, we're not talking about that person. We're talking about this person right now. We'll talk about that other person later. And I agree with you; it's bad. You know, whatever the situation is, but we're just focusing on this. And I can't. That just that lets me know right away that the discussion is not a discussion. It's more of a they're trying to sell me on something, and mm -hmm. I I usually retract at that moment because it's it's yeah. pointless. Yeah, that they're automatically taking the position as a dispute. Yeah, right. It, you're you're saying something that I believe you're attacking something that I believe. So I'm just going to attack something that I'm going to suppose that you believe. Yeah, right. It's so. it's it's it gets to me. So, um, well, with that being said, you know, why do you think it's so polarized on campus then? If I know the rest of the world's like that, obviously, so yeah, it, it trickles down. But campus is that place where you start to see it first. I think right? it's this the first. Is your, I, I mean, I think, it, like you said, I think on a campus, I think it's it is the first voice that students start to to feel like they have because they have that community around them. So inevitably, you're going to have a group that is a left leaning group, and you have a group that is right leaning group. And whichever one you fall with, you have the support of that group, and now you start to build that voice. And mm. again, it kind of goes back into there is no middle ground. I read a report the other day or a study the other day. It was a really interesting study, which it, I, mean, I say interesting. It's, it's also sad in its own right. But, you know, they were looking at the, I guess you would say the moral compass of people specifically in politics. 
and they were talking about how the moral compass becomes essentially more relaxed when you're talking about your candidate than you are the other person, which makes complete sense. Like when your candidate does something wrong, you're like, oh, it's no big deal. The other, the other people did something worse. So you accept what your candidate did, but you vilify what the other side, the, the, the opponent has done. And that to me is when you start doing that and everything goes to that, then it becomes more polarizing because you can't have a, a, a discussion about what is right and wrong because you don't see right and wrong equally. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's, it's so polarizing is it, it's, you're just getting your voice and you have the support, um, in college. What about you? Why, why do you think it's so polarizing? It's exactly that. Uh, they, they're constantly caught up in this funnel of information. They are, they are starting to get their voice in the world. The, the, channels the of information the political outlets that are trying to capture this new audience they pull out every marketing ploy that's there everything from the color of the background to appealing you know basically they're trying to appeal to individuals biases mm -hmm. just to recruit them and if they can be the first voice of reason uh, uh, so to speak in their ear then they know they've got them. And once they've got them, at least on any single issue, if they can get them involved, they get that team or group around them and then boom, they're caught. And, you know, much of our politics is inherited from our parents. Yeah. If, you know, or the family or the people we're around, um, we start to look at things through their, through their lens. And then the, the uh, outlets of information that we're exposed to, reinforces the things that create our opinion one way or the other and it shuts off doors to any other you know ways of thinking about things right yeah so there you go i mean it's it's kind of the same way in society uh in society it's a a little different because you know it's almost 100 percent focus on the underlying moral failings of the other side that they're that they're weak-minded or incapable or whatever simply because they they are part of that other team right yep. there's 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 no examination of somebody's understanding or there's no or very little attempt to understand the other side's point of view to interject some level of empathy into any conversation with other people so again it's it's an opportunity for dispute if you perceive that you have a dispute you join a team and then you you fight as a team and we have that that association bias we have that uh, team-based focus and that's it it's just reinforcing self-perpetuating and they get I get stronger and stronger and you, you you're using a you're using a term that i think is so spot on uh, the more you use it, I'm like, okay, that makes way more sense because I was actually going to say something, but you keep using, you, we're on a team and this team mentality starts to create this need to win, if you will, versus an understanding that you could be wrong. And I feel like that, 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 uh, this feeling of I'm not wrong, I will never be wrong. And I have to win every conversation about politics because my team has to win, I think is what has driven the wedge between the political sides more. I don't think people are accepting of the fact that, or I won't say everyone, the, the, how would I say this <laughs> and be not as extreme as it's probably going to come off, but the average left leaner or right leaner. So these, these really hardcore staunch left or right they don't want to accept the fact that they can be wrong. So they mm -hmm. go into every argument with the understanding that they are right and nothing will ever change that. I think that's really hurt it because once you start understanding that your, your views could potentially be wrong or you just, it, they may not be wrong, but they just may not be right. Like they're kind of neutral because you don't have all the information. Once you have that, and once you start understanding that you can start listening to people instead of arguing with people. I have a good buddy of mine. I think I've said this on the show many times. 
you know, we, we are very different people. We grew up differently. We, um, had different experiences growing up, you know, in, in childhood, even now, because we come from different backgrounds, different races, different cultures. Um, and I've called him many times and understanding that I have my own opinion and the way that I grew up. Um, I just want to know what his thoughts are. I want to know what his experiences were. I want to know what his thoughts are. I want to know what, why he feels the way he does. I just want to see it from the other side. And that's helped me a ton. Like that's opened my mm-hmm. eyes more than anything. And, and again, I go into that with the, with the understanding to myself that I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell him he's wrong. I'm not going to tell him that, you know, this is, this is, this is not what happened. I'm not going to tell him that, or, or, you know, I'm not going to gaslight him. I'm going to just sit there and listen and try to empathize, try to, try to understand where he's coming from. That's helped me a ton. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at, I look at things in a much different light. Well, I can say if more people were like that, then (laughs) perhaps the, uh, the political conversation would go just a little bit easier. Yeah. So no kidding. Well, well, let me let me ask you this. So, does does politics ever creep into your classroom discussion, or does it ever bring any? Well, I guess positivity would be amazing, but does it ever bring any negativity into the classroom discussions? I think naturally, it's always going to, especially in my my area, because we're dealing with finances and and finances, financial uh, politics is a big part of it. I mean, you have the social aspect, you have the financial aspect. Those are the two really big areas of, of politics that are where the divide is. And so with mine being in accounting, I think there's naturally going to be uh, some overlap. And in that, if you're very strongly opposed to something and I say something that doesn't make sense um, or doesn't match up with your views, then yeah, you're probably going to have an issue with it. Like One of the things that I, I used to talk about back when... Um, I think it was, it was during the Obama, uh, election, the second, I believe it was the second election. You know, there was this big thing about the Warren Buffett rule and the Warren Buffett rule is dealing with how could somebody who is the, I think second or third at that time, richest person in the world pay less in taxes than his secretary. Mm -hmm. And I was using that to bring up a point because, yeah, okay, I I get that side, but you also got to look at it from the other side. It's, not that he was paying less in taxes in a lump sum. He was paying less in taxes in terms of his, his effective rate. And mm-hmm. so that, that little missing piece, like, yeah, he was, he, but he was paying a lot more in, in total. It was mm-hmm. just, he wasn't paying as much in effective rate. Now that's, that's two totally different things. If you want to argue the effective rate side, that's fine. That's, that's completely understandable. If you want to f- focus on the other side, focus on the other side. But, you know, those kind of things, I just want people to, to, to see that there are different ways that I could have spun that because obviously we talk about taxes in my class. And so, yeah, naturally negative things are going to come up. I do think positive things do come up too. Like, you know, I talk about my, my, uh, my passion for just kind of learning and seeing the other side. Um, I'm not somebody that tends to, if a student asks, um, and, and this is not in terms of a candidate. But this is just something that could probably have a political spin on it. If a student asks about something, then they're showing intrigue to learn. And so I don't have a problem mm-hmm. talking about it, but I also let them know that this is, again, the way I see it. There's probably some other ways that you can you can take it, but I'm just giving you the facts that that I know based on research. So I think they're positives and negatives. It's just depending on what the student or the professor, depending on how you look at it, uh, what their end game is. Are they trying to sway somebody or are they just trying to educate somebody? That's, that's two different things. Oh, what yeah. about you? Absolutely. What about you? And, and yeah, I, I see it regularly, uh, obviously because historically I've taught legal classes Yeah. Uh, in addition to just pure business classes. And when you're talking about law, oftentimes it goes back to the genesis behind the law, the purpose and it comes back to the lawmaker, the political party that supported it, that type of thing. And yeah, so there are elements of understanding. There are elements of, you know, for example, I, oftentimes the Civil Rights Act of 1964, mm-hmm. right? That was the that was the act that uh, introduced anti discrimination laws. And obviously, one political party is extremely in favor 
of the the protections of the Civil Rights Act, particularly the voting rights element and uh, things like that, and <clears throat> during the same time period, that is. Mm-hmm. And this is part of this wave and all of the amendments to it, I guess is what I'm saying, not just what happened in 1964, but the whole period after it. One political party kind of is kind of stands around that. That's their that's probably their their number one issue, I would say, in terms of support. And the other party fights it tooth and nail, hates everything about it, uh, and is one of the, it's it's basically their source of ammunition for attacking the other side based upon largely, you know, biases, right? Trying to appeal to people's biases, um, you know. And so every time I bring that up in class, and and we have to spend an hour talking about some of the various provisions, particularly Title VII, which is discrimination in employment, there's always some political opinions there, and people start throwing it out. And every, every so often, somebody wants to start attacking someone else right uh, about you know i can't believe you you know this type of thing is still in place today i can't believe people still support this type of thing and then uh, on the other side you know uh, usually it's a lot more people in support of than against tend to kind of collectively together what are you talking about this is you know that type of thing so yeah i i run into it all the time and it, it becomes I don't have a ton of issues that people become so vehement about because people understand it so little. Mm -hmm. Even during the constitutional law um, courses or or discussions, usually people don't have a great understanding of the facts or the background of the circumstance. But uh, it seems like there are certain areas there that people are more prone to argue than others. And and yeah, it comes up and I hate to see it, right, because it takes away from... The students' abilities to learn, to understand what it what it actually says versus their perception of what it is or what it means for society, uh, type thing. Uh, you know, doing that same thing, you you see some very hot button issues like uh, LGBTQ rights, uh, uh, affirmative action, things like that. It all comes together during the same series of, of classes, and yeah, I get some pretty strong opinions in there because those. We tend to we tend to hear about those topics uh, in the political arena pretty constantly. I could I could definitely see that because there's there's been a couple times where I you know you hear about a law coming to be enacted maybe it's a state or federal you hear about it and then you hear what everybody is saying it says and then you actually mm-hmm. read what it says and what it actually says and what they're saying it says are two totally different things. They're oh, saying yeah. this is this is the possible implications of it, and this is what the law is actually saying. And so, yeah, it's it is irksome. That is for yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> what do you what do you think are some ways uh, students could help politics on campus become more helpful, or be just be seen in a better light than what we're currently seeing right now? Well, honestly, I think if if uh, if the presence of politics on campus simply brought a greater understanding of particularly the legal underpinnings of what's going on, what a law means, and then then tying it to the social ramifications of it. If you if this law goes through as proposed, what will that mean for society? Not on is it right or wrong, but just what effect does it have and what is the true tension behind it? If people are aware of that, at least then they're making informed decisions in terms of, well, well well-presented, well-thought-out, logical arguments and application of fact to situation. That's all education can ever hope to achieve in anyone, right? If If it seeks to do anything more like convince someone, then then that's not necessarily education. Right. It should it should give people the information that's accurate and allow people to uh, wrangle with that information how they will till they come to an understanding that they're comfortable with. So politics, in a way, does have the ability to do that. It does have the ability to cause people to think about things 
at a deeper level. It's just that's not what we always see. So in a perfect world, it would shift towards that, and I think that would have a positive impact. What about you? Uh, Is there any situation, scenario, view where (laughs) politics could be a a positive element of the classroom experience and learning environment? Uh, I think it's because it's the first kind of real stage that people have when they start to gain their voice in politics or they start to gain interest in politics, it is really building that foundation. Um, and I think that foundation obviously sets what the future holds for that person in, in politics. Um, whether they're going to be somebody who is very adamant about, um, or passionate about it and they don't see any wrongs. Uh, so essentially they're looking at it from a, a, through a, a biased lens. Um, or if they're going to be open and, and wanting to actually learn and be more uh, uh, knowledgeable about the overall. And I think that could be the positive. You know, I, I can't stand, and I think this is probably the reasons why I can't stand the political environment that we've, we've created in this nation right now and specifically on campus is that I, I can't stand the fact that you, every person gets vilified by somebody else based on their political opinion. Um, just simply because of their political opinion. Now, how they act, that's a different thing. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just saying the fact that people, even even people who don't say their politics, there's there's the assumption, and the, and the assumption creates this vilification of that person because the other people assume this person uh, thinks this way or acts this way or whatnot. You know, once mm-hmm. we get past that, I think that's where politics will become more... Um, it will it will help more people than it hurts. Like that's the thing is 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 politics is all about the importance of politics is all about the learning and the knowledge. That's what gives people, you know, the ability to make good judgment, good decisions. But if you don't have that learning aspect where it's just I'm right and you're wrong, then you're nobody's learning. They're only just reinforcing what they want to learn, like what they want to hear, and that's it. They're not they're not getting mm-hmm. the other side. So I think, you know, that, that aspect of it also to, you know, I, I, I do think, and this is something that came back. I, I think you remember this, but you know, this victim mentality mm-hmm. of if you don't get your way, then, then somebody is not, somebody is being unfair to your political views. You know, a while mm-hmm. back we had this thing, it was a, a political um, candidate that was wanting to come to campus to speak to the students. And it wasn't, it wasn't, um, uh, I guess you would say accepted. Um, but the problem is, is they didn't go through the right outlets, but the other side went through the right outlets. They came. And once they figured out that their political candidate couldn't come, it was just everybody's against our political views. But in reality, it was just, they didn't go through the right measures in time. And there's, there's protocol that has to be followed. So, you know, those kind of things, those, those, those little things where you, you're saying it's, it's against me politically. No, it's not. It's just against you because you didn't follow the rules, essentially. And that's mm-hmm. for both sides. You know, I, I hate to see that. I hate to see that because it's, you're, you're, you're trying to spin something and it just comes off un, untruthful. Mm-hmm. And that just makes the other side even more passionate and the the lack of better words here but the hatred against the other people because they're 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 trying to i just don't like that i just let's be open and honest uh and i think if we can do that we build that foundation we build that foundation that's going to give us a better outcome in the political world later on so that would be mine i think that makes complete sense and We'll keep our fingers crossed that perhaps this trend towards polarization and towards using politics as a way to separate yourself from others rather than coming together for a common uh, objective with regard to how our nations run. Perhaps uh, perhaps it'll change. Perhaps it won't. But uh, <laughs> yeah. here's hoping. Right. Here's hoping. Yeah. Well, do, you, been uh, a, been a do you have any uh, other in... points to bring up before we, we close this one out? No, I was going to say, this has been a, I mean, as much as I hated this episode, like the thinking about it, it's been a good episode because I do, hopefully somebody will take this and kind of understand where we're coming from to make it better. And it kind of spreads. So, um, you know, it wasn't a bad show. Uh, do you have any parting words before we head out? 
Yeah. Uh, remind everybody, uh, give us those stars on your favorite uh, podcasting app. That's what's going to keep us at the top. Uh, send us some messages. We really, really, really want to talk about what you want to hear about. That's the point of the show. So we need your voice in there. And uh, every now and then we might give a shout out too. So <laughs> if you Absolutely. want a shout out, hit us up there too as well. And then, of course, social media handles, uh, our, but our website's the big one. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show. We hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into. Mm-hmm.